In this video, we're going to take a look at the wave and mapping tabs. They both tie in together. So let's just get started with the wave. Now, the wave view is the central location for editing and manipulating the samples that you load into sample one. And let's just start from the top left corner here and cover all of the various parameters that are available to us. So right here, we have a menu for the trigger mode. Now, each time we press a key on our MIDI keyboard or pad, or even our QWERTY keyboard, if that's all we have available, we are actually triggering our sample and how it plays back is set here. By default, the trigger mode is gonna be set to normal. And in this mode, as soon as we press a key or pad, our sample begins playback and continues until we release the key or pad. So if we have a longer sample that we're using, it will stop playback if we release the key before it's finished. This is because in normal mode, we are making use of the release value here in the amp section. And by default, that is gonna be set to zero seconds. So let me actually bring in a longer sample so we can get a look at that really quickly. Just gonna drag that into the sample list. And let me take that snare out of there. And I will bring up the virtual keys. I actually don't have my MIDI keyboard at the moment. So I'm clicking and holding and then our sample plays all the way through. This is normal mode. If I were to click and release, you see it stops and that's because in normal mode it's tied into the release. So if I increase that all the way up and then trigger again, You see it plays the sample all the way through because at the top of our release that is 30 seconds. You can see in that pop-up display there. I'm gonna take that back down. And then let's move on to the one shot. Now one shot is gonna go ahead and play our sample completely through. We don't need to hold down the key. I'll just trigger once and let go here. And so that completely disregards the release value within our amp section. Now lastly, we have toggle. In this mode, our key or pad acts as a toggle button and both triggers and stops sample playback. So if I go ahead and press C3 here, we start playback. I don't have to hold it down. I'll trigger it again, and then I'll press to stop. And that is the toggle. For now, we'll come back to the normal. Now next to the trigger modes, we have reverse, and this is pretty straightforward. I'll just go ahead and click that, press and hold. I love reverse. I'll take that off. Next we have normalize. This essentially increases the volume of our sample without changing its dynamic range as would happen with say compression. So if I were to click normalize, you'll notice the waveform here is going to increase in size, but it still maintains that the dynamics of our audio sample. In the top center of our wave view, we have the name of our sample that we are currently editing. This just corresponds to the name shown in the sample list here. And you'll just want to pay attention to this display to be sure you're editing the correct sample before you begin making adjustments. And here we have left right arrows. This is going to move between the next and previous samples that are within the same folder as where we got our percuss percussion loop from. Next to that, we have root, low, and high. You can think of these as the coordinates of our sample as far as where it lies on our keyboard. Now the root note is simply the key at which our sample will play back at its original pitch, and by default, sample one sets it at C3 or middle C. Low and high determine how much of the range of keys that will actually trigger our sample. By default, it will span the entire range of keys from C-2 to G8. And this is where our mapping view actually comes into place. Here we can see our sample spanned across the keyboard range from C-2 to G8. The vertical gray bars represent the white keys and the dark gray bars represent the white keys. And we have lighter gray thin lines which denote an octave. We also have a slider in the bottom right corner here which is going to allow us to zoom in on our keyboard map. Notice on our virtual keyboard down below that we also have a blue bar that follows along with our settings in the mapping editor. 
And if we would like to restrict the range of playback for our sample, we can come to either end of this range bar and just click hold and drag to adjust. So we see our hand changes there to these arrows, then I can just pull that in. Notice down below that updates as well. I'll come to the right and pull that in a bit. Now we can see in the field here, C3 is our root note, and that is indicated by this lighter blue vertical bar, and we can change that root note by click, hold, and dragging. You can see that this updates in the field above, just as well as the low and the high. So just by clicking and moving, we then adjust that. And you can take note, again, on the virtual keyboard, we have this lighter horizontal bar that denotes the root and we also have the root low and high when we are on the wave view so if we'd like to make these adjustments from here we can go ahead and do that and we have several different options we can click and just manually enter in a value or while it's highlighted we could press a key or a pad on our MIDI controller and then that will populate based on which one you pressed now you could also click hold and drag up and down as well this also applies to the low and high settings. You could just click here and then press, say, the higher key of the top of the range that you'd like to play back, and then click here and press your the lowest key on the range that you would like to play on your MIDI controller, and then these will fill in. You could also manually or click, hold, and drag. And now that we're back on the wave view, let's continue on with parameters here. And we have different controls for viewing our waveform. So we can click, hold, and drag vertically to zoom in and out. We also have a slider here that will accomplish the same thing. And we can also use the mouse wheel. Now if we hold down shift while using the mouse wheel, this is going to, let me zoom in first. Now I'm going to hold down shift and use the mouse wheel again. And we can see we're able to scroll through our audio sample in this way. And of course, we could always come down here, click, hold, and drag. Now, if I zoom back out, we can see that we have these triangular markers in each corner. And we can use these to restrict the playback of our sample to a specific region. So if I were to drag this in and place that there, I'll pull this in to there. And now when I trigger this sample, it's gonna be restricted to this specific area here. So I'll go ahead and press and hold. Now we have this magnifying glass icon, which if I click, then we zoom in to where we have these uh, borders set, the triangular playback control. And this is just gonna give you a close up of the specific area that is playing back. And then if I press this again, we're gonna zoom back to our complete sample. So we just toggle between those views by using the magnifying glass here. Now, if I were to press the L, let me actually zoom out first. So if you're zoomed out and you wanna to get to your left marker, just press that. And for some reason that didn't work. Let me scroll over to the right, try that again. Okay, so then we bring that left marker into view, and in theory, the right is supposed to work the same way, but I think there's some sort of bug here, because when we click that, it, uh, well, right now it's not doing anything, but. but it doesn't seem to be working as it should, is the point. Now, another thing worth mentioning is if I were to zoom in on this left marker here, we're gonna see a snapping behavior taking place. If you can notice that, let me zoom in a little bit further. So you can clearly see that snapping. And this is sample one snapping to zero crossings to try and avoid clicks and pops on playback. Now, if you would like to avoid this, actually first, if you hold down shift, 
it's going to be more precise with these jumps. So I'm holding shift and you can see that's moving pretty slowly. If I release, then we're moving pretty quickly through here. So if you're really trying to make a fine adjustment, just hold down shift and it's going to go much slower. Now, if you prefer not to have the snapping behavior, you can click in the start down below here, as well as the end fields and manually enter in a value. Just click once and put your value in. These are in samples. You can also click, hold and drag. And then you can see that this is not, there is no snapping effect. This is just moving smoothly along. If I zoom in a bit more. And the same with the end. We can also use our mouse wheel. Okay, moving on, we have a loop function, which is set to off by default down below here, but we can loop a specific region of our sample and choose between sustain, release, or ping pong. And let's just take a look at each one. When we choose sustain, notice that we have a new horizontal bar in the wave view that denotes the loop range and that range also becomes highlighted highlighted in black you can see the areas outside of the loop range are a bit grayish and in sustain mode as long as we continue to hold down a key or pad on our controller the loop will continuously cycle until we let go upon releasing the key or pad it will then stop cycling the loop and continue playing the rest of the sample if we have our release uh, turned up here in the amp section and specifically if we are in normal trigger trigger mode. So if I go ahead and trigger this loop, I'll click on C3 and just hold. And we can see that that's going to continue to loop for as long as I hold. If I let go, then it stops. And again, that's because our release value is turned all the way down. If I take this up to about 16 seconds, I'll click hold. We continue to loop, then I'll let go. And then it finishes out because we did turn the release time up. I'm just going to take that down for this moment. And before we move on, just know that the loop function is only going to work for normal and toggle trigger modes. So let's move on to release and in release mode, it's just basically going to pay attention to the release time. And once you release your key or pad, it's going to continue to cycle the loop for as long as we have set here. So if I were to take this up to five seconds, I'll click hold. We begin our loop. And then once I release, it should loop for another five seconds. But it is not for some reason. We are set to five. OK, I just wasn't reading that correctly. We we're on milliseconds. So I'll take that up to five seconds, press and hold, we cycle, then I'll release. It should continue on for five seconds. And it fades out. And the last mode that we have is ping pong. And this is going to just basically go back and forth. I'm going to click and hold. I'll release and it's going to continue that ping pong on for about five seconds and fade out while doing that because we are in the normal trigger mode and we have that set up there but that's a pretty cool effect and that covers each of the three that are available so I'm going to go ahead and turn that off okay next we have left and right fields which are going to display the position of our our loop markers so actually, I turned this off a little bit soon and jumped the gun, but you can see that that updates for the left marker as I drag and the right marker is the same. We can also click, hold and drag in the fields vertically. We can use our mouse or we can just click once and manually enter in a value. And this is in samples. And then next to that, we have a X fade, which is going to be a cross fade in samples. If we end up with clicks or pops in our loop, we can click, hold and drag to introduce a crossfade between our end, our start and end markers, and hopefully alleviate any clicks or pops that we may have. You can also click and manually enter in a value and we can 
go up to a thousand there, a thousand samples. I'll click out of there, turn our loop off. And then next we have follow song tempo. So this is going to force our audio sample to follow along with whatever our song tempo is. So right now it is 120. If I trigger the root note C3, we've heard that a million times now and we know what that sounds like. If I click follow song tempo, it sounds pretty much the same because the BPM for this audio sample is 130. And your audio sample does need to have the BPM data encoded into it in order for this function to work. But essentially what this is going to do is stretch our audio as we go up and down the um, keyboard here. So if I disengage this, we can, I'm going to take the release down. We can hear that this is... pitched up or down, depending on where we trigger. Now, if I turn the follow song tempo on, you can hear that the pitch does go up, but the sample is stretched to maintain the rhythm or the BPM of our song. And if I go lower, the pitch does drop, but it's sped up so that we can keep in line with the 120 BPM. Okay, we've got the start and end markers, which we're familiar with. Those denote the position of our uh, playback markers here. And then we have all notes off. So if we have something go crazy and a bunch of voices are playing back, I'll change the trigger mode to one shot, start the sample. We can press all notes off to stop any audio that's being played within sample one. And that concludes our video on working with the wave and mapping areas here and their different parameters. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the envelope section and, and as well as down below here, how they tie together and how we can make use of those. And then after that, we're going to take a look at the record panel. So I'll see you in the next tutorial and thanks for watching.